Most of us have the ability to see in color. In fact, color can greatly change how we perceive information. That said, each person has a different perception of color, and I'm completely sure that you have had a fight with someone over colors at least once in your life. You may remember the striped dress from a few years back that had the online community in uproar. Was it white or was it blue? Well, it rather depends on our perception of color, or more precisely, it depends on the light. Without getting too technical about it, it's the light reflected from the object's surface that our eyes detect. And it is this light that our brain then translates into color. So what we determine as a particular color has much to do with how much light falls on the object at this moment in time. But perhaps more interestingly, it also depends on the interpretation of our brains, which can differ widely from one person to another. As you are probably aware, some people see a greater spectra of colors compared to others. Then, there are also colorblind people who have a more limited perception of color. 5 to 10% of the human population suffers from some level of colorblindness. Therefore, it is extremely important to keep that in mind when talking about data visualization. Okay, with this new information, there are three important aspects we'd like to emphasize in this lecture. First, colors could be used to emphasize part of the information or even convey extra information. Second, colors can be used to enhance the appearance of our chart. Third, colors should be chosen carefully. All right, let's start with the most important one. Colors can be used to convey extra information. Here's a bar chart showing information about the financials of a company for the last three years, as well as for the next three years. The historical information is in the same color, while the projections for the future in a different one. This distinction is quite important as these bars are facts, while these estimates. While this information was available in the labels, we have also used color to emphasize that. In this way, we ensure that our audience will read our chart correctly. So you see, color could be used in a chart to speak to you. Fantastic! Apart from informational, colors have another important purpose. They can be used to draw our attention. Most of the time we use them with this purpose exactly to make our chart stand out more. But you know, in a nice way, one that the audience will enjoy and find visually pleasing. While I don't need to convince you of that fact, please look at this fellow. The colors on this creature are truly magnificent, and with reason. This is a mantis shrimp, the creature that practically sees three times more colors than a human. It's here to tell us that colors can aid your presentation tremendously, they can turn it from a dull shrimp into a glorious creation. So coloring your charts appropriately is very important. Thanks, Mantis Shrimp, for teaching us that. However, there is something else that we can learn from the Mantis Shrimp. Scientists suggest that although they see three times more color than us, they are actually worse at differentiating them. The point is, too many colors is not always a good thing. And in fact, when talking about data viz, less is more. So if you take away one principle from this lecture, it is that using more than three colors in a chart is simply prohibited. Usually going for two colors is desirable, but a three color scheme is the upper limit. Good, I'm sure you will remember that and stick with it throughout our work together. So we reach the third important part of this lecture, how to choose colors. Let's take a step back. There is an intersection of art and science called color theory. To work successfully with data visualizations, it is completely mandatory to be familiar with color theory. Nevertheless, it is not essential to dive too deep into it. So let's just quickly explore its basics. The three primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. All the rest of the colors could be created from a combination of these three. Red and blue makes purple, blue and yellow makes green, and yellow and red makes orange. 
the newly created colors, purple, green, and orange, are called secondary colors. Obviously, we can repeat the same operation and mix each two of the colors on the screen together. The new colors that we create are called tertiary colors. The overall diagram that we get is called a color wheel. You can create all these colors using a paintbrush at home, and I'm sure you've already done so as a child. Continuing with color theory, we've got hue, saturation, lightness, shade, tint, tone, temperature, and more. But let's stop here. All of these color theory fundamentals are crucial for an artist or a designer, not for a data person. And here's the problem. First, if we create graphs and charts for a living, we are not designers. We could be artists of sorts, but generally, let's face it, we are no Picassos. We should be displaying data with charts, not picking colors all day. Second, computers don't generate colors based on red, blue, and yellow is in color theory. Instead, screens such as TV screens and computer screens rely on mixing light, and the main colors are red, green, and blue, coining the RGB color scheme. Moreover, most printers actually use the CMYK color model, which introduces yet another level of complexity. So knowing all that is all well and good, but it's not too helpful in terms of data viz. When creating a chart or a dashboard on the job, we simply want to choose a good color theme. And while all that color theory sounds fun, choosing your color from the color wheel is simply too time consuming. So what do data viz people normally do? Well, there are three general cases. The first one is when your colors are predetermined. Say you are working with 365 Data Science as I am. If I were to make some graphs that were intended for the 365 team, I'd normally go for the 365 color. In this way, my charts will immediately relate to the audience and will appear very professional. In fact, quite often a company's colors dictate the styling of the data visualizations. Okay. Second, there are online tools that can help. Coolers.co is my favorite. I've been using it for years. Once you enter their website, you can click Start the Generator, and there will be a five-color palette for you to enjoy. Pressing Space, we get a different palette. Space again, one more palette. You can generate as many palettes as you like. The best thing is that you can actually lock one or more colors, and then clicking Space would generate beautiful palettes revolved around the locked colors. I won't spend any more time on that. I just want to note that from the home page of the website, you can also explore trending palettes. These are some pretty neat color combinations, so you can bookmark that URL for future use. All right, one more thing, and we've saved the best for last. We know that even with color palettes at your disposal, it is not always easy to pick the best colors. That's why we have decided to use a different color scheme for each section of the course. We have carefully picked the colors for each chart draining from our work experience. This will essentially provide you with a dozen templates that you can confidently use later on in your career. Music